Hey guys, it's your girl Dipper Kitchen by Faith. We are now up to um, the book of Revelation, chapter 16. We're up to chapter 16. Ain't that something that's going by quick for the seven, seven part series? we up to chapter 16, and this is series number five. Series number five. We only go up to, we got two more to go, but this is series number five. I hope you guys have been enjoying it and getting something out of the word and seeing, hearing what thus said the Lord about his second coming and the things that we need to prepare for and be ready for. And the first thing is being saved. Nobody wants to be caught in the tribulation. Amen. So God has given us fair warning what's about to come and for us to get it together. Get right. The Lord our God is coming soon. So let's get into it and um we're going to start with chapter 16 verse 1 i'm going to read 16 17 18 16, 16 17 and 18 if thus it, if god gives me more to read then i'm going to let it go a little bit further but those three um chapters i'm going to read 16 17 and 18 let's get it right let's get it this is getting good guys it's getting good and I hope y'all are enjoying it. And I'm trying my best to put a little Ebonics in between to kind of like break it down just a little bit. Amen. I hope y'all enjoying it. Uh, chapter 16, verse 1 speaks about the seven bowls of God's wrath. We think of a bowl like a bowl that you eat out of, you know, that little small thing, eat some cereal, something like that. But I'm quite sure God's bowl is bigger than an airplane. Probably bigger than that. So sometimes we have to use our imagination just to get a glimpse in our minds what God is showing and telling us. Amen. Chapter 16, verse 1. And the word of God reads, Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go pour out the seven bowls of God's wrath on the earth. The first angel went and poured out his bowl on the land, and ugly, festering sores broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it turned into blood like that of a dead person and every living thing in the sea died. The third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. Then I heard the angel in charge of the water say, You are just in these judgments, O Holy One. You are just in these, these judgments, O Holy One. You who are and who were, for they have shed the blood of your holy people and your prophets, and you have given them blood to drink as they deserve. And I heard the altar respond, Yes, Lord Almighty, true and just are your judgments. The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and the sun was allowed to scorch people with fire. They were, they were sheared by the intense heat, and they cursed the name of God who had control over these plagues, but they refused to repent and glorify him. Who wants to get, who wants to get burnt with the sun and still trying to be mean and won't, and won't repent and say, Lord, I take you as my personal savior. It ain't take that much for me. All you got to do is just say, boo, and I was down on my knees. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beasts, and his kingdom was plunged into darkness. People galled their tongues in agony and cursed the God of heaven because of their pains and sores, but they refused to repent of what they had done. The sixth angel, out of his bowl on the great river Ereparites, evaporates and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east 
Then I saw three imperial spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophets. But they are demonic spirits that perform signs, and they go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them for battle for the day of God Almighty. Look, I come like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and remains clothed so that no, so not to go naked and be shamefully exposed. Mm. You got to, you got to stay prepared, guys. Then they gathered the kings together to the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. The seventh angel poured out his bowl in the air. And out of the temple came a loud voice from the throne saying, It is done. Then there came flashes of lightning, rumbling, peals of thunder, and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it had ever occurred since mankind had been on earth. So tremendous was the earthquake that the great city split into three parts and the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the Great and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. Every island fled away and the mountains could not be found. It's like everything went into the water. From the sky, huge hailstones, each weighing about a hundred pounds. Mm fell on the people and they cursed God on account of the plague of hell because the plague was so terrible. Oh my God, Lord help us Jesus. Hold on guys. The book of Revelation is fire. When I say fire, I mean it will burn you just from reading it. Chapter 17, Babylon, the prostitute on the beast. Babylon, the prostitute on the beast. And the word of God reads, one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come, I will show you punishment of the great prostitute who sits by many waters. With her, the kings of the earth committed adultery and the inhabitants of the earth was intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. Then the angel carried me in the spirit into a into the wilderness mind you this is john his vision that god gave him of what's to come there i saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns the woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold precious stones and pearls she held a golden cup in her hand, filled with um, abominable, ad, abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. And the name written on her forehead was a mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and the abominations of the earth. I wouldn't have touched her with a temple pole. I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of God's holy people, the blood of those who bore testimony to Jesus. You see how we flip? We see something looking cute, and all, or what they say, all that, all that glamour is in gold. She looking up there, looking all sexy and carrying on, and here we go, people of God, turning our heads and like, hmm, let me go, let me just walk right on down there. And you better stay focused. 
chapter 6 continues with verse 6. When I saw her, I was greatly astonished. Then the angel said to me, Why are you astonished? I will explain to you the mystery of the woman and of the beast she rides, which had been which had the seven heads and ten horns. The beast the beast which you saw once was, now is not, and yet will come up out of the abyss and go to its destruction. The inhabitants of the earth whose names have have not been written in the book of life from the creation of the world will be astonished when they see the beast because it it once was and now is not and yet will come. This calls for a mind with wisdom. The, the seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five has fallen. One is, and the other has not yet come. But when he does come, he must remain for only a little while. The beast who once was and now, now is not is an eighth king. He belongs to the seven and is going to his destruction. The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom but who for one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beasts. They have one purpose and will give their power and authority to the beasts and they will wage war with the lamb. But the lamb will triumph it over them because he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings and with them will be his call chosen and faithful followers that's us then the angel said to me the waters you saw where the prostitute sits and people multitude nation and languages the beast and the ten horns you saw will hate the prostitute they will bring her to ruin and leave her naked they will eat her flesh and burn her with fire for God has put it in their, in their hearts to accomplish his purpose by agreeing to hand her over to the beast, their royal authority, until God's words are fulfilled. The woman you saw is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That's fire. We don't want to be handed over to the devil. We don't want to be handed over to the devil. We came too far, too far to turn back. And if you did slip, it's time to get back up. Time to get back up. Verse 18. Chapter 18, verse 1. Getting my chapters. Mm. Lament over fallen Babylon. Lament is to cry over fallen Babylon. Chapter 18, verse 1 reads, After this I saw another angel coming down from heaven. He had great authority, and the earth was eliminated by his splendor. Illuminated by his splendor. Illuminated, lit up. With a mighty voice, he shouted, Fallen! Fallen is Babylon the Great! She has come, she has become a dwelling for demons and a haunt for every impure spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable animal. For all the nations have drunk and maddened wine of her adultery. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. Warning to escape Babylon's judgment. Verse 4. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues, 
for her sins are piled up to heaven and God has remembered her crimes. Give give back to her as she has given back given pay give back to her as she has given. Pay her back double for what she has done. Pour out a double portion from her own cup. Give her as much torment and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. In her heart she boasts, and I sit I sit enthroned as queen. I am not a widow. I will never mourn. Therefore, in one day her plagues will overtake her. Death, mourn, and famine. She will be consumed by fire. For mighty is the Lord God who judges her. She got it coming. She got it coming just like we have it coming if we don't get it right. Threefold woe over Babylon's fall. Verse 9. When the kings of the earth who committed adultery with her and share her luxury see the smoke of her burning, they will weep and mourn over her. Y'all go ahead and cry over, over, over that thing over there. I ain't doing all that. Terrified at her torment, they will stand far and cry, cry. They, terrified at her torment, they will stand far off and cry. Woe, woe to you, great city, you might, you mighty city of Babylon. In one hour, your doom has come. The merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her because no one buys her cargoes anymore. Her cargoes of gold, silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen, purple silk and scarlet cloth, every sort of citron wood and articles of every kind made of ivory, costly wood, bronze, iron, and mar marble, cargoes of cinnamon and spice, of incense and myrrh and frankincense, of wine and olive oil, of fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and carriages, and human beings sold as slaves. Girlfriend had it all going on. Mm. They will say, the fruit you long is gone from you. All your luxury and splendor have vanished, never to be recovered. The merchants who sold these things and gained their wealth from her will stand far off. Terrified at her torment, they will weep and mourn and cry out. Woe, woe to you, great city, dressed in fine linen, purple and scarlet and glittering in gold and precious stones and pearls. In one hour, such great wealth has brought you ruin. Every sea, every sea captain, and all who travel by ship, the sailors, and all earn their living from the sea, will stand far off. When they see the smoke of her burning, they will exclaim, were there ever a city like this great city? They will throw dust on their heads and with weeping and mourning cry out, Woe, woe to you, great city, where all, all who have ships on the sea became rich through her wealth, and one hour she had been brought to ruin. Rejoice over her, you heavens. Rejoice, you you people of God, rejoice, apostles and prophets, for God has judged her with the judgment she imposed on you. Y'all got to be careful when y'all mess with God's people. That God's wrath is fire. You can't do things to God's people and think you're going to get away with it. It's just not going to work. The finality of Babylon doom. Then a mighty angel picked up a boulder the size of a milestone and threw it into the sea and said, with such violence, the great city of Babylon will be thrown down, never to be found again. The music of the harpers and musicians, the pipers, the trumpets will never be heard in you again. 
No worker of any trade will ever be found in you again. The sound of a milestone will never be heard in you again. The light of a lamp will never shine in you again. The voice of the bridegroom and the bride will never be heard in you again. I'm, don't, you don't want the bride and the bridegroom to leave you. Mm -mm. That's God and the Holy Spirit. Oh, no. Your merchants were the world's important people. By your magic spells, all the nations were led astray. In her was found the blood of prophets and of God's holy people, of all who have been slaughtered on this earth. That's powerful. That is powerful. Mm -mm 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 -mm. What one what one woman did. One woman. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Well, we finished with 16, 17, and 18. And I'm going to say to you on that note, good night. Because that woman just messed me up. She was a, whoop, she was a pistol. They say the fall of a man is always a woman behind it. Mm. Sometimes it makes you think how pow and 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 how powerful a woman can be when she's conniving. Mm -hmm. Something else. You got to get it right. Got to get it right. So guys, I want to thank you for tuning in once again for this is chapter chapter this is series five and we stopped at chapter 18 19 20 21 three more chapters to go three more chapters to go and we is done done hope you enjoyed tonight's um tonight's lesson guys until the next time this is devil catch by faith saying wash them hands Wear that mask, social distance. Keep God first and all you do. Get into the book of Revelation. It is just, whoa. And what God gives me is for me. And what God gives for you is for you. Because everybody's situation is different. The word of God don't change. It's the revelation that he gives you. And the revelation changes. We're going to be on the same, on the same path. But different ways. Different ways. So when God gives you a revelation, it may not be identical to the to what he's given me, but it's going to be similar. It's going to be similar because he's dealing with you and his ways and what he needs to shake up in you. To shake up in you and to shake out of you. Just like for me, he has to shake me up, spin me around, turn me over a few times to get me straight. I am not exempt. I don't care what color I wear, how good or bad I could deliver the word of God. I am not exempt from his wrath. That's why we have to stay at the hem of his garment, stay behind the cross. Okay, the cross. There you go. Stay behind the cross. Amen. Keep God first in all you do and say. Tell somebody about Jesus and show somebody a little love. Let your light shine before others so that others can see the light in you. And when they see the light in you, they'll see the light in Christ through you. Good night, everybody. Love you.